Um, there you go. I remembered. <laughs> Illegal. Yeah. I got a punch. Got it. Um, I don't know if you all knew we got the opinion back from council. Mm -hmm. And they say they think it's a permissible use of CPA funds. They believe it's a permissible. They, they mm -hmm. believe. Right. Right. But um, from what I read with the Helms, the three part or three part Helms test, there's no religious um or significance yeah so yeah it's right. just right. there's no stained glass there's no imagery that's the word i was looking for um it's to protect a historical building more than it is it's not for the church per se mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my opinion uh, i want to hear all your opinions too yeah <laughs> i think it helped oh. to get that reminder article in the same time about in amherst because that right put it in a different town perspective mm -hmm. and it's that church is a vital part of that community too and and that kind of I mean not that I was really ever seriously concerned but I think that helped me kind of see like this is something a lot of communities are probably going to be leaning towards doing mm -hmm. at some point for some of these older buildings and it, I think it does make sense when you can he apply attached, these principles he attached the some material from the community preservation coalition database and i had done the same search a couple of weeks ago and i counted since after the decision the kaplan decision was passed there were there have been 61 community preservation projects funded um, for churches a lot of them with windows um, and another six projects for church owned buildings that weren't the churches themselves, things like parsonages and fences and things like that. Yeah, he, um, he, you did a more thorough search. He only sent two years worth of data. Well, it's our three yeah, years. He 20, took, it, he took it from another source. So yeah, yeah. Um, the, the nearby towns included Deerfield, Amherst, Stockbridge and well, in Northampton, the Tiffany window. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that was pre. Oh, that was pre. That was pre the case. Yeah, that was that was that was many years ago. So. And another point I wanted to make is the church isn't just a church. It's also a community gathering place. We have chicken barbecues there. We have church suppers there. Um, all religions go to these events. So it's not strictly a church. There were a lot of meetings there, town function meetings and other meetings when the town yeah. hall was being worked on. And yep. a lot of people, um, we did one of the fundraising concerts for town hall there, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. And half the town uses the, the equipment, the tables and the plates and the silverware. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Okay, so can we just uh, maybe, we probably want to talk about conditions. But I want to make sure everybody's on the same page saying, okay, we're going to go ahead with funding this, these windows. Everybody okay with that? And we'll take a formal vote in a minute. But I don't want to start talking about conditions if somebody's really against doing this. Okay, so there's some conditions we can put on. One of them's the town can get the right of first refusal. Should the church ever want to sell? Which I think and, and, and Alan, you remember that's that was the recommendation of the historical commission. It was, and I actually got that right in front of me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and um, a short term, what was it called, Donna? A short term preservation restriction? Yeah, less than 30 years. Less than yeah. 30 years. I'm, I guess if we did something like that, we would have to say that we don't expect the church to change those windows for the next 20 years or something. I mean, I'm not really sure what kind of preservation restriction you would put on. You got any ideas, Judy? Well, I think if you did it, we, we talked a lot about this in the historical commission and maybe Donna is a better person to answer than I, but 
we talked about things like the scale of the cost of the restriction probably shouldn't be vastly greater than, than the funding given. Like if you put it on the whole building, it's, it's got an implicit cost in the, in the value of the project of the building if you were to sell it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fairly significant. And also in terms of maintenance required. Um, so scale, um, enforceability, um, the nice thing about a temporary one is that it uh, doesn't doesn't necessarily involve mass historical commission because they can right. be. It would require the historical commission to administer it, and that's not trivial, and it requires some legal expenses. Right. It, it would be analogous to the way the conservation commission is administering the conservation restriction on Waitley Center Woods. If yeah. We show, if we chose to to take that step. Um, the, the other thing that we didn't talk about at the Historical Commission that I hadn't realized till I read the Community Preservation Coalition piece is that the judge who opined in the Kaplan case noted that some people did preservation restrictions. I think that was a condition in the Acton case. And he thought that might violate uh, church independence of church uh, to to do things to exercise its religion. I, I would think that might be the case if it was on the whole building. I can't see that obtaining. I can't see the church suing anyway, but um, if it were just on the windows, that I can't see that that would be an issue. Would keep them from putting stained glass windows on. But. Yeah. I, I mean, I, don't, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do that. Alan, you remember that when we talked to Stuart Saginaw, Saginaw, and he was, it was his idea, he was explaining to us this under 30 year option. Mm -hmm. He said something like, and you know, windows probably aren't going to last much longer than 20 years. <laughs> and we both said, well, the windows we're talking about have been in the building for at least 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm not, I think in the historical commission, we ended up thinking that to put a restriction on one component of the building that is a very important component, but as Judy suggests, probably a small dollar mm -hmm. item in relationship to the whole project wasn't, wasn't going to be very manageable. Um, and maybe it's also a matter of trust that if if the church is as it is wishing to do the most responsible kind of historically appropriate replacement, it just seems unlikely that within 20 or 25 years, a group is going to come in that wants to rip out the good windows and put in vinyl frames. I, I mean, that's that's a matter of trust, obviously. That's not... Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, let me just throw a scenario out there. In 10 years, the church no longer has enough members to keep supporting it. They decide to offer it to the town. The town says no. So they sell it to anybody. That anybody now wants to take out the old windows and put in something else, the vinyl ones you're talking about. Would this restriction cover that? Yes, it would go with the property. It would it go would with the property. Asked. It would be a registered deed restriction, registered deed restriction, and would go with the property. All right. So, say ten years in, the church stops existing, they sell it. Another ten years goes by, the restrictions done because it's a twenty-year restriction. Now he can go ahead and change the windows out. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't understand why we want to do all that. I agree with you, Donna. I think it's a matter of trust, and if. It falls into private hands due to the town not wanting it. And I can't understand why the town wouldn't want it. Um, I would think whoever buys it should be able to do what they want. You would hope that whoever bought it would be respectful enough to the building that they would want to keep the windows too. But that's obviously, as you say, up to them. Right. Well, and, and we, we, the historical commission would I mean, we have no authority, but we would be doing everything we could to help those prospective buyers understand that if they if they um, 
did historically appropriate renovation that there might be some funding that would be available that will become quite unavailable <laughs> if they, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to avoid saying right or wrong, <laughs> but sure. you know. um, so yeah, right I mean, now the, we're other, talking the, about other, the, the other thing we could do, which Stuart mentioned, um, and I think it's in the notes that we I sent you all from the historical commission is we could say if the windows aren't if, if these new windows are removed within next year is the, the grant has to be paid back. I, I'm not advocating that, but that is the other option that um, that we've learned I'm about. I'm not sure we go that far, but if we sold if the church sold it to somebody other than the town. Then I think we want our money back. If the if the church sold the property to a private developer, and if they we, remove the windows, excuse me, and if they remove the windows, or if they were going to do something different with the building, it's hard to know yes. what that might mean. Like, they may have to right. They may have to remove the windows. Yeah. But shouldn't it, should the church pay us back now that they've sold it? Or the buyer has to pay it if, yeah. Or we just say we're out there dollars. Well, that's, that's maybe a condition of a preservation restriction that if they're removed, then the funds need to be returned. Judy, you're thinking that that, that, that kind of uh, condition couldn't be a standalone condition. It would have to be embedded in a formal preservation restriction. No, it's, it just seems to me to, I guess it, I was trying to say it works out to be roughly the same thing. Maybe that's an easier way to do it. Yeah, um, this reminds me that um, something, I don't think Alan that you and I reported to this whole group is that when we had that long conversation with Stuart, he brought a, a sort of a third subject up at the end, which is that he recommended that whenever we make a grant to a private organization or, or individual to something other than the town, that we should have a grant agreement. I think you did bring it up. Oh, I, did we? I okay. remember thinking, okay, oh, I should before. take the one out that, because at one point I had gotten one prepped for housing and I don't remember exactly why, but I, I remember thinking I should look for it, but it's not on the laptop I have now. There was a sample for the housing trust. I'd look in your housing trust files. Yeah. I remember that was extremely painful. And I'm the grant sure. agreement itself was really, and housing it stuff the, is, the contracts are really terrible. No, it, I was, could maybe, it was a oh, personal it issue. It was a oh. personal problem. Got it, but okay. I think, I think, I think Brian <laughs> yeah. finally, Brian finally came up with a good document. And, and there are samples. Okay. There are samples. Stuart sent there. us. Stuart sent us samples of things that were not about affordable housing, and oh, you know, were, were more or less detailed. But it wasn't all as awful as what a housing agreement would be. Right. In terms right. Of it's it's complexity. pretty straightforward. What Stuart. I mean, sent exactly. Us. I feel like they were from one paragraph to three or four paragraphs. Right. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, yeah. They weren't killing. Super. And I think included in it was the possible right of first refusal and any restrictions that we're putting on. And some requirements for reporting that they, that the, you know, that the work had been done, that the work had been done the way we, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Like, we like any other grant requires an end of, um, end of project great. report. I'm glad he sent you samples. That's perfect. Yes, and I, it doesn't I, need to be much more than a page. It should. I, I, can, I will no. forward those, but not while I'm on the phone or, or no. I'm doing oh, no, this because no, I'll course. lose everything. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> no, all we have to do is figure out what we want to put in this grant agreement. We can write it up. Make sure we all look at it before our next meeting. The next meeting should be a public hearing, unless you want to do a meeting then a public hearing. I was just wondering whether you want to decide on the restrictions at the public after public hearing comments or before. I would think they'd want to know if I was sitting in the audience, I'd want to know what 
restrictions. Yeah, I mean, I th maybe just outline the options. Yes. Yeah. And then any public opinion, if they have any ideas. And then, yeah. then if you've got comments, that might yeah, be this is, this is a road we're thinking about going down, but we don't necessarily need to. Yeah, okay. because I have one question that's the, I know that a preservation restriction goes with the property and is registered. I don't know whether this um, return of funds, how you would ensure that that goes to the next owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe there's a, yeah, I think it would, it would maybe yeah. that's very easy and maybe it's yeah. not. I just have, I think it's mm -hmm. a legal question. Yeah, yeah, the previous, yeah, that means legalese. <laughs> um, I know we're talking an awful lot about this and none of us are very worried about the church, but there's going to be other projects coming our way. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is going to be very why. important. So it's good to hammer this out now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I, um, I agree that it would be good at the public hearing to outline restrictions that we are considering. I, I think my own preference would be to uh, limit that to restrictions we have agreed are reasonable ones for this grant. I, I mean, just for example, I don't think, I, I haven't heard anyone suggest that a preservation restriction on the entire church building in connection with a 35, so I, I, I just assume not open that up as a possibility oh, right, right. since, you know, we've talked about this for a couple of meetings now. Right. So, um, yeah. We actually so, need, a, <laughs> I'm just a little hung up about the preservation restriction. Can't we just have a grant agreement saying without having a restriction? I mean, well, that's where you what's get the difference? the reality. I, as I said, I don't know whether that, whether there's a way to ensure that that goes to the next owner, which is what oh, the sense is that the group it, it is have to, yeah. concerned about. Yeah, it'd have to be on the deed. You'd put a deed restriction on it. And then if there's any changes, they would have to come back to us. I mean, maybe you can phrase that as a deed restriction. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's in so other that, words, maybe that's the clarification for legal is can we, is this acceptable to include in the grant agreement a deed restriction, right? A first refusal, repayment, potential repayment, depending on um, what the. Mm -hmm purchaser might have in mind. I, I, I don't, I obviously, I don't think any of us are lawyers, but I don't think the right of first refusal would have to be no, in no, a deed no, restriction. No. I mean, that's no, just a no, condition. That's, that's, that's just that's a, a condition. That, that would just be an agreement but, between the church and the town of Waitley. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that only applies while the church owns it. Right, exactly, right. exactly, right. yes. But the rest of it, you want to make sure rolls over. Again. Any, or anything else you want to make sure rolls over. Put. What if the person buying it is going to configure it in such a way that those windows need to come out? Then they can right. repay the grant. Right. Yeah. What, if, what if they want to take out the historic windows and put one big picture window <laughs> in the well, front maybe of the they, church? Maybe they want to put apartments. Maybe they want to make two stories there right. and put apartments in that. Right, I mean, right. It and there's won't a, work because the septic isn't big enough, but it's a, you know, that kind right. of thing. Yeah. That's all sorts of what, it, what ifs. Yeah. But if so, then they repay the grant. Yeah. And that needs to go with the property, like you're saying. Uh, yeah. Right, that's the part. It, it would have to be a deed restriction. And then needs to have to think about the, like the, the math part where if someone does that at year 18, do we ask them to pay the full amount of the deed restriction back, or do we have it depreciated over? Sorry, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would maybe just say, like, if you're going to, if you really want to repurpose the building, you just pay it back. Like, be, I would too. And not make that more complicated. Yeah. Because there'd be inflation too. So 38,000 yeah. wouldn't be worth what it is. Now. Well, and we're investing it, and we're, our, our, our hope and intent is for it to be used as exactly the way we're planning for another 20 years. And right. so, yeah. I'd go for 140. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we won't have a planet then. What's but this yes. the same old wood? <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs>
Will we have reached the temperature where glass would melt? I don't know how high that is, but it's probably very high. <laughs> thousands of degrees. Yeah. yeah. It could be uh, it could be ocean front in 104. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good point. All right. So, so we need to put together a grant agreement. Well, you start working on it. So you know just, we want just for and, the no, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I just want the one things I'm thinking about in the grant agreement is the right of first refusal and the restriction that if it gets changed, they pay back the, the grant at within some period of time. Yeah, within 20 years. Within 20 years. If they sell the property and they don't change the windows, then we're not going to right. get anything back. We're okay with that? Okay. So. You're sure? Because I thought you wanted that provision to roll over. If they don't change the windows. If it just gets sold to a private developer. Should the developer... We did talk about that, Judy. Should the developer pay back the grant? Yeah, I thought we decided yes. I'm like, I think we did. You too. Just said, okay, uh, I thought you just said no. Okay, they should pay no. it back. Well, from an historic preservation point of view, not so much a committee point of view, I think, again, we're doing a kind of worst case scenario, but it, in Allen's, in 10 years, the church dissolves or changes the way it operates and doesn't need a building anymore. I, I would rather see us um, encouraging whoever buys it to preserve the building with positive messages than saying you're gonna to have to pay whatever, whatever we're talking about, $38,000 back. And then we have no you know, we've, we've kind of washed our hands of the situation. Um, I, I think, I mean, it's an important building in the center in the National Historic District and I'd rather be doing anything we can to encourage whoever owns it to maintain certainly at least the exterior. So I, I mean, why would we, if, if the church dissolves and, um, you know, we're talking an individual buy, <laughs> with an enormous amount of money decides to buy the house and make it a private residence and wants to keep the windows. Why would we be punishing them by asking? Because them the, the, grant, the grants for the greater good of the town. Because of the public good aspect. It's like most individual, it's their own asset. Huh. This grant is for the greater good of the town rather than well, isn't the that good isn't, of, excuse me isn't that keeping the windows in place if they do that's great if they don't then they pay back the grant but, oh, no, but then oh, i was misunderstanding what you were saying yeah, i i, I thought you were saying if the church sells it to somebody else that somebody else has to pay back the grant immediately that's not what you're saying no no, okay, not. good, good, good. I All misunderstood right. you. Maybe, maybe, maybe I said it that and way. I both misunderstood you. <laughs> Catherine's looking at me and said, Al, you did it wrong. <laughs> well, I agree with what you're saying, I think. Alan. The second time. <laughs> the second, yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. Only because if if someone, if someone, if we sell it to say a restaurant, like the thing that comes to mind is that Holy Smokes. Do you remember that church? Yep. That them burnt down. Like, yep. sorry, that we just liked that church. That we liked it as a church, and then we liked it as a restaurant, and then mm -hmm. we were really sad when it went away. But if it's a restaurant, like it's kind of still serving the public good if they put effort into trying to preserve it. Like that, yeah. so then it's different if it's an individual or a church. So I kind of just think if if the exterior of the building is going to stay in its same state, then. I don't know if we can we mess with it. I think it's only if they like you, the example you gave, where maybe someone wanted to turn it into apartments, and maybe the windows are at completely wrong height for that, and they want to take them out. 
that's I think that's the only reason we would have someone pay it back is if they really weren't going to continue using the windows. Okay. I mean, look at look at what happened when the town of Sunderland had been for 10 years wringing their hands about what to do with their own town hall, their old town hall. And then Deborah Snow and her partner, who's white, I think her name is, bought that building and restored it. I mean, it, it is it is very nicely maintained, the blue right. and it and I, I would argue that I mean this is totally aesthetic, but that it serves the public good in the sense that it's part of the historic center of that town. Yeah, I agree. You know, if yeah. they keep the external look, yeah, that's I would say there would be a forgiveness there. But yeah, if they try to change or remove, I would think that would cause you know us to want to uh, reimbursement of our grant. I think we're all saying the same thing in different. I think words. you're right. Yeah, yeah. Basically. And are we? Are we? Is twenty years the the hypothetical period we're circling around? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Here's another question, guys. There's what nine windows we're replacing? How many, Judy? Ten. Ten windows. So somebody buys it, wants to replace two of them, the two facing the street. Are we wanting all our money back? <laughs> mm. Or are we going to prorate it? It gets difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It gets really weird, but this is the kind of stuff we got to put in the agreement. Or... Yeah, if it is per window basis, yeah. Well, let's think about it. And then that's, again, we've got to have public hearing and the massive number of people who come okay. <laughs> may have comments. All right. We're going to think about what we want in the grant agreement. We want to think how they want to pay the money back if it comes to that scenario. Um, it, it might be that Community Preservation Coalition has dealt with that too. May have some examples. Yeah, I, I was. I guess. Uh, to me, if you're going to change the windows facing the street, then you're changing the appearance of the church. And that's what we're trying not to do. Uh, to me, if it's one window or 10 windows, I don't know. All right, we'll talk to the coalition about that too. <laughs> All right, Nathan Alps. Oh, let's do the minutes real quick. Wait, so, have we? Have, are we voting? Are we voting? A pro Usually, we vote a kind of okay. preliminary yep. approval. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Should we, could should we do that? Everybody nod their head when I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nod smile. Who's gonna go check yeah, out? I couldn't see Doug yeah. nod. So we I, I, I think I'm vote. supposed to abstain. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, this is, probably be this is ticklish be because if it were a town project, I wouldn't, but I don't know what to do here. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd abstain if I were you. Yeah, I well, I will. I think, I think as you are an officer, it's a good idea for you not to. Well, vote. but I mean, I look at Jonathan Edwards wouldn't abstain from a recreation commission project. Yeah, but that's a grant to the town. He's a, he's a yeah. select board member, you know, so, but yes, I will. I will abstain. Well, anybody want a word? Or you want me to give it a shot? Agree to a fund to, to fund the thirty-eight thousand dollar grant with prior conditions to say that we are looking for more information on how to preserve the windows in case of legality issues. Okay, those will be based on coming up with a grant agreement. Right. Yeah. yeah so we said the grant agreement and the other. Yeah, the three issues that we've mentioned. So we're voting on appropriating $38,000 of CPA funds to the Whiteley Congregational Church to the replacement of windows um, on the condition of an, a grant agreement being reached. And the, and the right of first refusal. Okay. Yeah. Which and I think possibility, will be the possibility of other conditions. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Unanimous. No. One abstention. Well, one abstention. Right. Right. Usually uh, you're right. You're right. Should we add in the language to that? Not like it wasn't already a little bit wordy, but from the historic preservation bucket, or do we want to just do the buckets later? I mean, it's pretty obvious to me this is a historic project right but 
What do you I think? don't know how I was. I didn't go and check. Oh, you didn't the check the numbers, numbers yeah. because I figured okay, we'd then. do that at the public hearing. So yeah, okay, um, never mind. I, I doubt that there's enough. Money I, I don't enough. think there is thirty-eight thousand in there yet. I'm too detached, so I haven't yeah. been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good vote on that afterwards. Yeah. Okay, never mind. That's all right. <laughs> I didn't want to do the numbers till Dara signed off on the fiscal right. year year mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Is a public hearing, when we have a public hearing, is that also a CPA meeting? We, we, we it's usually, usually part, it's yeah. part, the way the planning board does that it's part of the meeting. So it does have to be posted separately as a public hearing and a CPC meeting? We have to advertise the public hearing long before you normally post it. So um, but then the you have to post. It doesn't, well, the advertisement will just say the time it doesn't necessarily say anything about the rest of the agenda. So the way the planning board does it is to open the meeting at five and do things like minutes or give everybody time to get there and then start the public hearing at 515. So do you post the pub planning board meeting? Yeah, but later, yeah. Yeah, of course later, but yeah. you have to do both. You have you to advertise have to the post, hearing. You just have to post the meeting and post with the, the agenda if you're gonna do that, you that, you don't uh, have uh, to, if, you, if all you're going to do is, is the, well, yeah, I think you have to because you close the public hearing to take the vote, so. Yeah, okay. And how much time, how much lead time do we need to, for the legal posting for the public hearing? It has to appear essentially three weeks. Um, it has to appear for the two Wednesdays prior to the mm -hmm. to the public hearing, and I think I don't know for Tuesday meetings the the ads have to get there get to the paper by Thursday. It's probably by three weeks roughly. So if we did it on the normal cycle, it would be it would be we plenty of time. time. We have enough time. And the 14th would be the of September would be the second Wednesday. That sound okay with everybody? Sure. Okay. Would that have to be hybrid as well? Or I'm trying to think what it would be. I, I just assume stay remote. It can sweep. We have permission to be just remote through oh, yeah. March, March 31st. For the end of March. Uh -huh. Yeah. And hopefully okay, no. that will be extended. <laughs> I hope so. Um, are we all good on the church for now? We want to talk to coalition about a grant agreement. Just at least look at the ones that he sent us. I See will. How... I will. I will find those and send them to everyone else. And then, and and if if none of the examples address this issue of um, kind of um, partial reimbursement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For, um, I'll write to that staff member. It wasn't Stuart himself, but somebody who works for him who sent me all that or sent us all that stuff. And I'll ask if he has other has any examples. Okay. Okay. Uh, minutes from last meeting, which was July 13th. Entertain a motion. Move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. I think that's all I got, guys. Uh, well, there's one other thing on the agenda. All right. <laughs> which um, oh, I, yeah. Have, yeah. I sent to you all, but I haven't managed to print it myself, which is just that, um, remember the church's application came in before the Historical Commission started having conversations about just in general, making historic preservation grants to privately held entities. Um, since then, we've had a couple of conversations and we agreed on um, really what it would be an amplification of the current guidelines specifically for private entities to consider. And we had uh, pretty good thorough conversations and um, I really can't find them, but I sent them to you, so I hope someone else can find them. 
Yeah, I got one. Do you want me to read them or? It. Sure, if you if that would be helpful to people, I apologize that I. Well, Catherine can probably post them. They were attached. You sent it late last week, I think. I sent it just yesterday, I think. Yeah, I got it right in front of me. If you want me to read it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is there anybody Wait, who does super. anybody, but Donna doesn't have it. Do, does any Does anyone need it? <laughs> Here it is. I I have now found it, but only in my email. Um. Sorry, I'm not I'm not good enough at Zoom to find something if I haven't opened it before we start yeah. the Zoom calls, <laughs> and I don't want to lose the whole call. Yep, I can I can hold on. You think? Oh, oh should I let you share? Would that help? If you let me share, then I can. Oh, I, have, I yeah. have done that. I have done awesome. that. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> oh. It'll take me just a second because I have a thousand windows. I open take it. Today I'm the only person who's nostalgic for the time when we could just bring a couple pieces of paper to a room and hand them to people. <laughs> it's something like this. Can you read it? Yeah. Uh, no, she's she's good. She's yeah, good. Yeah, she's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to zoom it wow. a little bigger. We that's are impressive. a team. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow. Teamwork. Oh, that's right. So point two gets at the question we were discussing a moment ago, a demonstrable public good, <laughs> you know, which is a, a big umbrella, but worth it, you know, <laughs> would, mm -hmm. would stop some applicants, I think. <laughs> you know? Anna, I don't know that we actually explicitly talked about what part of this the CPC needs to approve and what part is purely within the historical commission's domain. Um, but yeah. I, but, I think I think that um, I assumed that the additional criteria were more in the historical commission's purview and the yeah. conditions in the CPC's purview. Yeah. I mean, for example, the Historical Commission recommended for the church's grant the right of first refusal, and we've now decided to accept that, but also to consider additional condition. Yeah. Conditions. But, yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, I think I was sending this to you for your information, <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, I think though that it when we revise the plan, it should go up on the plan on the plan or the application or wherever right. legibility right. criteria show up. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Anything else, Donna? No. <laughs> In a word. Okay. <laughs> You did get the email that the revenues were seven thousand dollars more than we had anticipated last year, evidently. So, so um, we cut it close, but it fell down on the plus side instead of the minus, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's still not final, but it's probably pretty good. I actually have one more related uh, sure. suggestion, um, which is that. Um, you know, I don't know if our town council bills by the minute or the word. I'm hoping it's I the think minute, they have, they have, the a of, they have a retainer. They have a retainer. So, right, but most retainers, some it's retainers built. have have a limit, and then there is it's a time. time. I, yeah. I, I, um, I, I, I would like to suggest that if ex specific costs were incurred by having town council review the church's proposal, that we consider. Um, supporting that from our administrative expenses. Um, and, and I actually wrote to Brian when he sent that to, to the church, just to say, were there, will, will you be billed explicitly yeah. um, for that opinion? Um, and he, hadn't, he didn't answer me before the meeting. 
I think on the invoices, Donna, what I remember from 20 years ago, you do see the by the minute, like you can break down a charge to that right, degree right. of specificity. So it would certainly be possible for DARA to charge any CPC related things to our administrative budget. It does seem to make sense. We're, we're talking about it in many of our meetings, review from legal, right? Well, doesn't the planning board have a boatload of reviews from legal? Do they pay legal from their administrative account? I haven't heard. They don't have an administrative account that works quite like ours. That they have a formal PC is a little different. We're like an off budget. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just to be revenue. clear, if, if, if Judy's right and we pay a flat retainer month in, month out, no matter how much work he does, I am not suggesting that we assume some yeah. portion of that. Right. I'm fairly I, certain I'm that simply not if we get billed something, if the town has built something explicit for this piece of work. Um, Alan, you're not, you're not like I'm kind of leaning that we are a town board and that the town should pay for any legal expenses that we need to do. I mean, I if we get sued, isn't the town going to back us up? Sure. We are the town. Right. In that, in that sense, we are the town. <laughs> Why are yeah. we using our administrative money for, to help the town out? I mean, I'm not trying to sound petty by no means. I don't mind using administrative amount, but right. All, right. all these other boards use legal counsel for one thing or another. Yeah. We get planning board gets a lot of rulings. Um, I have been impressed over time of the extent to which Brian is willing to ask for town council opinions. I mean, he he does not hold back at all, which I find. Oh, yeah healthy and I think means they've got a good financial arrangement because he really doesn't seem to worry about the cost implications of it. So, so you did um, ask him, Donna? I, I only I only wrote back when he sent this the ruling this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it said thanks. Um will we be billed sp uh specially for this? Okay. And he yeah. hadn't answered me by the time he left. I mean well, let us know if he answers it. Okay. 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 No, because but I, but I absolutely with... take your point. I mean, why should, you know, because most of what we've used, I mean, typically we've used that administrative account. Well, I guess we were paying for staff support for a while, but otherwise I guess we've used it to help advance proposals to the right. point where we could consider them, right? Yeah, I would pay for surveying or- Right, right, right. And right. the coalition dues. The coalition is, dues. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So that's that's a, yeah. It's not big, but it's important. Right. Right. All right. We'll see what Brian says. Okay. Okay, guys. All right with that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. I have nothing else except for a very empty stomach. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> I left stuff on the stove, so I gotta. Yeah, I'm ready to go back down right. there and get I finished. I'm talking about Velveeta and burger tonight, maybe. Oh dear. <laughs> oh Velveeta. <laughs> I share your low brow uh, taste. <laughs> all right. So we'll see everybody on the 14th at five o'clock via Zoom. We're going to post a regular meeting as well as advertise a public hearing. To start. Will I advertise it for 5.15 or 5? Five? 5.05. Five, 5.05. Five. I'm not going to... That makes sense. I will put the application up on the website and none of this is going to happen until Monday. So. Okay. Good. Down Cape? Going down to the Cape? No, I'm uh, babysitting be my beautiful sister down there. Yeah, nothing. You should go. Going down there on the 25th. Um, I'm the caregiver for my sister-in-law who just got out of rehab for hip surgery, so. Okay. Okay, well, good luck. All right, we're gonna say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Cool. Pray for rain. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.